Hey guys, Jack Spirico here with Needs of the Week. Needs of the Week has returned. Needs of the Week uh, kind of went to like Needs of the Month, I guess. We had about a month off. It wasn't intentional. I knew we would have about two weeks off. I went to California for a conference. And while I was out there, I jacked up my knee. Pun not intended. Jack, jacked up. Okay. Um, but I really did, and it kind of threw me off. And I had so much to catch up with on the farm that I just had to let some things go for a while. And Needs of the Week was one of them. Uh, mead, mead making has sort of pseudo continued up until today, uh, but it's been more of racking and dealing with the stuff of the past. I still have enough batches, but I have a mead a week for the whole year so far, and I've got one more to add today. I think you'll like this one. So I go outside today, and I look, and one of my dwarf mulberry trees, it's like this tall. I look at it, and what is, what's going on with it? It's covered in beautiful black mulberries already, about as big as my thumb. So I'm like... I wonder how many are on there. I went and got a four cup pirate Pyrex thing, and I got three cups of fresh black mulberries. I'm like, that is enough for a batch. So what's in today's batch? Well, three cups of black mulberries, and then the wife had an orange that was left in the fruit bowl. I'm like, I love what orange does for meads. So I zested one orange and put the juice in, tossed the orange away, just the zest and the juice this time. Of course, two, tables, two tablespoons of three flowers blend. If you don't know what that is, check the video notes below and you can see all about that. But I use it almost, almost all my meads. Uh, teaspoon of Firmax yeast nutrient. And then for honey, I use three pounds, a little bit more than my customary two and a half. I want it to be a little bit richer and bolder because mulberry is not real assertive. So I wanted to do some of the honey to bulk the meat up a little bit. And uh, mulberry, if you don't know, if you've never had it, it's like a, a weaker version of blackberry. These are black mulberries. But uh, as far as the varieties of honey, I had about two pounds of wildflower honey left in one bottle and a pound of clover in the other, so I mixed them. Am I suggesting that that's the way to make this mead? No. And this is the reality that you learn in meads of the week, right? You use what you have. You use what you have. That's what I had. I kind of wanted to, to, to kill both of those containers, get them rinsed out, cleaned out, and used up, so we made a blend. If I would have had three pounds of wildflower, I would have done with all wildflower. If I had three pounds of clover, I would have done it with all clover. Get a profile for it. I think the wildflower, though, in this is a lot more assertive than the clover. The clover honey I've been getting is really, really mild. The wildflower honey that I've been getting from, um, can't remember the company. Check the video notes. I'll put it in there for you. But um, it's, it's really assertive. It's almost, almost as strong as, like, buckwheat honey. And it's made some interesting meat so far. So that's what we've got cooking for our next batch. What I've been doing up till now, just kind of keeping things going, is getting stuff racked and, 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 and some flavorings added to the secondaries. So let's give you some updates on not all the meads that we've done on Meads of the Week, but a few and where they're at. Uh, the Kiwi Mint, fantastic. Absolutely over my head, ecstatic about it. But I would probably use more mint the next time around. It's been racked to the secondary. Remember, that was done with six tablespoons of mint to make basically a big French press full of hot mint tea and then that was rested and dumped into the fermenter instead of letting the mint sit in the fermenter and possibly get bitter. I would probably up that to 12. But the mint is so cool the way it's there. You drink it, there's no mint. Oh, there it is, hello. So one of the people that have tasted a little sampling of it has suggested leaving it alone. I'm probably gonna leave it alone, but I'm probably also going to make a mint in the future with more mint. You learn as you go. Next up. I made a two-gallon batch of uh, the Meyer lemon mead that's really become a favorite of everybody that's tried it uh, to do my oaking experiment. I oaked a bit of it with like a quarter of an oak stick. It came out really good, but there's none left. It all got sampled. So the two-gallon batch is out in the garage uh, in heat, not really hot heat. It's like 75 degrees out in the daytime right now, but warmer than the house to allow the oak infusion because it's done fermenting. It's not fermenting. It's just aging. It's in a two-and-a-half-gallon uh, jug, and it's, uh, it's aging with a two-thirds of an oak infusion spiral light toast. Um, the preliminaries with that little arrangement with the oak toasted uh, aging on the Meyer lemon mead, fantastic, beautiful. Makes you think of a Chardonnay or maybe like a Sauvignon Blanc that's been oaked, but there's lemon instead of the grapefruit of a Sauvignon Blanc. It's, it's really kind of cool. Uh, the Sin Vin Gin. Uh, that was just uh, so basically some Meyer lemon mead racked off, and we've got it aging now on cinnamon, vin uh, vanilla, and ginger. The coffee. Oh. So the coffee I did with three pounds of honey, and I don't remember what it was. You can look up one of the past episodes, or I'll put it in the show notes for you. Uh, but I did some, some coffee, just coarse ground coffee, 
and then a basic mead with it. I racked that uh, this week, and it's not quite as clear as most of the other stuff made about the same time, probably because it's a bit dark, uh, but it is a little cloudy, but it, since I've racked it, it seems to be clearing nice. I put in four whole fresh vanilla beans, uh, chopped up and, and split, so they're cut in half and split lengthwise in there. I just smelled it before we started this. It smells wonderful. And it's not dark like you'd think from coffee. It's like a light tan color, just a bit darker than this that I'll tell you about in a second. So that's going good. And then I did a pomegranate orange you might remember. That is really, really wonderful. It's not done yet, but you can tell it's going to be good. So that was a pomegranate and I think an orange zested and juiced. So on that note, what am I drinking today? This is a pomegranate mead. So this is made with uh, one pomegranate, the berries of one pomegranate, two and a half pounds of honey, uh, and yeast and, and water. That's pretty much it. It's good. It's, it's really tart. It could use some balance, and that's why I tried making it with orange. I think it will come out better. I'll also tell you something about pomegranate meads. You, you think you're going to come up with something that's this brilliant red. This might on the camera look a little cloudy. It might have a little bit of cloud in it because I just bottled that bottle. This was actually made like the day after Christmas. Uh, so I might have got a little stir up that needs to settle out in the bottles. It's a little drawn off sample there. Um, so there could be a little bit of cloud, in it, but it's not much. And it was really, really clear, but it comes out almost brown. If you want your pomegranate meads to come out red, you're going to have to infuse them with something else to adjunctify it. Or you're going to have to use a hell of a lot of pomegranate, and I don't know how much, and it might be overpowering. It comes out more of this kind of like, I don't know, this 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 deep brown-ish color. Not really brown. It's like a, a, like a golden mead, but it goes toward the brown side of the hue of gold. But uh, I ain't complaining about it. But yeah, when you add the orange to it, especially the orange zest, it really balances it. What's going to be up next? Well, next week, I think I'm going to make a vanilla mint for you. Remember, I said I'm going to jack up that peppermint. I think I'm going to go with like 12 teaspoons of, tablespoons of peppermint to my mint tea and do a vanilla uh, bean in the primary. And then when we rack that, we'll taste it. And if it's not enough vanilla, we'll add some vanilla to the secondary. I think vanilla mint will play well. I've never heard of anybody doing with that with mead. I'm sure with as many people as there are out there making meads, people have done it before. But we'll give that a try. I have plums and peaches coming on my trees like gangbusters. That probably won't be next week, but I'll be definitely doing some stuff with plums and peaches. And I'm thinking next week, I've been toying around with the idea of making an apricot mead. I'll probably go to the store, pick up some organic apricots, and we'll probably have two for you next week. Something to do with the vanilla mint and something to do with apricot. So we'll knock that out for next week. I've also got something else going on. I did decide to make some ciders for the Keezer, some big five gallon batches. I've got a five gallon batch of strawberry apple cider. Just dump and stir apple juice, uh, two pounds of brown sugar to five gallons of apple juice to four pounds of frozen strawberries. And get this guys, you go down to Costco to the freezer section, you get a four pound bag, four pounds of organic strawberries in the freezer section for about $12.50. You can do a lot of different meads and ciders with that. And then I've got another five-gallon batch of cider going that's made uh, with a half a cup of chamomile and a half a cup of elderflower, but basically two of the three flowers that we use in the three flowers blend. I made up a five-gallon batch of that. We had it in the keyser. We had a couple workshops here. People came, floated the keg. Everybody loved it. It made it through one workshop. So we're definitely making more of that. Anyway, I'll be back with Meads of the Week next week. No big long vacation this time, I promise you. Remember, if you like Meads of the Week, you'll probably like the work I do on my podcast, the Survival Podcast. You can find that at tspc.co, tspc.co, where you'll find all types of cool things like making mead and other things for self-reliance, self-independence, self-reliance, independence, self-sufficiency, and personal liberty.